My friend Sherry McGibbon and I, both who were members of city council at one point in time, um, ran into each other and we both said, it's time to do something about older gays and lesbians. So let's get moving. With that, um, we both brought together a few friends that we had to, to take a look at, at what was going on. Um, it, we had already decided that we were going to focus um, on the both the services, uh, programs, and housing for seniors, and whether they were with, uh, how see, how older gays and lesbians fit into this framework that already was in existence, kind of thing. That so that was kind of um, a bit of our starting point. So before I go further in in about the organization, I, I do want to uh, help all of us to realize uh, that we are all on a journey. Um, and, 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 and although we all know that, we probably are used to thinking more about the beginning of the journey and where we are, and not very often that the journey has an end point as well. Um, and that, that end point uh, is the part that most of us are now engaged in. We're, we're part of the end of the journey. And I think that what we see as significant, and what I personally see as significant, is that that um, we all take a little time to think about the kinds of experiences we've had and how that has shaped who we are. Because we also know that as people get older and enter in the, their later years, they bring that with them. They, they have been shaped by experiences that make them who they are. And I would use as an example for myself, um, um, thinking about um, the, the HIV AIDS kind of thing. That. And, and I would say that anyone on here today has lived through that period of time, if, if you are at all older, when, when HIV AIDS, in fact, took over, um, and particularly with gay men, but to spread beyond that. And it was a, a, a time when what came together and very difficult for most of us is the fact that we were gay and we were discriminated against. Um, we were dealing with death, which most of us are not wishing to do. And particularly when we were in our in, in the 30 years old for many of us in the, that age range. Um, and we were also dealing with a disease that was fatal kind of thing in that. It was a very uh, unique period. It was a pandemic for us that, that I think um, uh, was very much shaping. I, I would relate that, that uh, in a personal experience that um, in, in, in working with um, uh, the AIDS Network of Edmonton, I had a call from a friend uh, about another friend of mine um, who I knew quite well, who was in the hospital which I was quite surprised. I, I hadn't realized this individual was uh, sick at all. So uh, probably on a, um, a Thursday, I, uh, right after I heard this, I went to the hospital um, to visit this individual, this friend of mine. Um, and, and as I was going into the room, it was apparent that lunch was sitting outside because no one would bring it into the room. So I brought in the lunch um, and, and my friend ate a little of it. He was, you know, not well and wasn't very interested in the food, but ate a little. And we talked um, uh, and had a, a conversation um, and reminisced a little bit. And then I left. Um, and and uh, the next day, Friday, uh, I, I went back to visit and I had a, took an article that I knew he would be interested in. We'd both be interested in. And we chatted. He was quite lively. We, we went through the article. I read part of it to him. We discussed some of the things that were there. And we reminisced about some times that we, I won't share um, that you don't need to know between he and I over the years. Um, and then um, uh, I did a little cleaning of his room because staff were reluctant to clean in his room as well. So I did a, a, a few of those things and then left. Um, the next day, Saturday, I, in late morning, I, I went and it was a, a beautiful sunny day. 
Um, before I even entered his room, I could see the light from the, his window coming out into the hallway. Um, it was that kind of a day. Uh, I walked into his room um, and there was no one there. And I, I was uh, startled and thought, well, is he some testing or has they moved him somewhere else in the hospital? And as I was stepping out of the room, one of the staff grabbed me and said, oh, we tried to catch you before you went in. He died last night during the night. And, and I can't tell you how shocked I was. Um, I, I knew everyone would die. I mean, that was apparent. Um, but the impact it had, that, that I, I was just, I, I still can't hardly talk about it because it, it's such a, even now, it, it, it really resonates with me. And I, I realize that's, that's part of who I am and part of what I bring forward as I move into becoming a little older kind of thing in that. Um, and that I, I think it's, had, uh, it's been one of the things that has shaped my life in, in a variety of ways. So, so I, I wanted to kind of give that context to the work that we're doing with our with this group, um, and I'll move back into a bit more about what it is that we're up to. So, um, so um, w w when we got together um, at that first meeting and thereafter, w we and and talked about um, you know services and programs and and housing, et cetera. We realized that we didn't know what was going on. So we then in, embarked on finding out what was happening across the country and, and the U.S. And, and lo and behold, we found that there was practically nothing for gays and lesbians across the country. The only place that was anything similar happening was in Ottawa, had a group, someone like ours, who had been around for over a year. And we did contact them and talk to them um, and got some information from them. Remember, this was the days of only telephone, you know, and this was before electronics. So all of this moved along a little slowly um, and, and discussed with them actually that, that they were going to send one of their people out to us, to our group to meet and talk. That, that didn't happen in between time, the, the funding that they had been receiving um, got taken away and they essentially disappeared for a, a period of a year. They've come back in a little different way, but that was the only group of any kind that was doing something around uh, gays and lesbians in Canada. In the US, the, the one major group we found was a group called SAGE, uh, not the one here in town, I'm talking about New York City. And, and they were a big outfit. Um, they had a library, they had a lot, produced a lot of materials. Um, they were working with individuals and groups at offices in other parts of the city of New York. They were a big, a, a really going concern. And we learned a great deal from them as well. Um, after we kind of figured out this a little bit, there wasn't much and we got some stuff from New York that was helpful. We said, we need to find out about Edmontonians kind of thing about who are uh, part of our community. So we got some money from the city and we did a survey um, and we had about 130 uh, responses to that from, from people who are gay and lesbian in, in Edmonton. And it, what the survey uh, pointed out uh, in, in terms of some of the things that it, it, people thought were important um, and, and the kind of qualities that they thought were needed to make services, programs and housing um, unique to them that that would fill uh, fulfill what they wanted was they they wanted that them to be part of a community of people um, with similar interests. Um, they wanted to be connected with people, both gay and non-gay. Uh, they were quite clear on, on that as well. Um, what some of us may call friends and allies. Um, they wanted to be seen and to feel welcomed. They wanted to be respected. They wanted to, to feel that they were in the place that people wanted them to be. And they wanted people to see them with a sense of dignity. They also wanted access to um, amenities that, like transportation. They wanted to be able to make decisions about themselves that would be important. And they also insisted or said many times that the that, um, programs and services and, and uh, uh, housing needed to be safe and inclusive. 
Um, and, and one of the challenges was if they aren't safe and inclusive, that allows discrimination and bullying. And that's a challenge that, that, that um, is diff most difficult and people don't wanna deal with again. Um, they also recognize they would need to be out again, coming out to doctors, staff, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that, that can be um, not easy sometimes. They're also concerned if the organizations or the groups were uh, had a religious base, sometimes they can be pretty discriminatory and can ha have some pretty negative um, um, pre uh, preach or stuff about people who are gay and lesbian. Um, and got back to the, the discrimination and, and and I will quote from one of the persons said, discrimination hinders coming out and coming out hinders discrimination. And so there was a real sense of trying to walk that line, knowing there's two sides to that. Health was the other one that they also brought up, of course, about how their health might change. I've put on this slide our website so you can look at further details. These, these reports are on our website. And I go to the next slide, please. We also in, in, um, then had a symposium where we brought people together, um, many from our, our little group, and then others that were involved in organizations to look at the findings, what people said, and what is it that we would do as an organization, uh, uh, Edmonton Pride Senior Group. And we decided that our first effort would be um, developing a PowerPoint and doing presentations with uh, um, programs and centers in housing that already existed about gays and lesbians, what they needed to know, what kind of background and experiences we had that we would bring, what would be appropriate for us. And when we um, did a couple of PowerPoint presentations uh, or uh, we put together and we, we um, in fact went and, and spoke um, to at, at times to, to boards of directors, uh, to staff, and sometimes it was to clients that were there. And each time we would you know, change the, the presentation a bit to fit the audience that we had. Um, all of those experiences also led us to the next thing we did in the next slide, please. So we recognized that we had the need to advocate it, that, that what we had learned and what we were hearing said, you know, it, it's a big world out there in Edmonton and Alberta, and we need to be advocating about older gays and lesbians and what's happening. So <clears throat> we attended a number of um, uh, conferences that were provincial, where they, it was bringing together people uh, from organizations and, and groups um, and talked about uh, what we knew and, and talked about how they needed to ensure that what they were doing was appropriate and sensitive <clears throat> to the needs of, of persons who were, were gay and lesbian um, and from, from the, the larger community. Um, we also uh, advocated with um, uh, politicians and senior officials um, about uh, our concerns and what needed to change. Uh, we did have some impact on, on uh, policies um, uh, in, in some of the provincial policies on um, home, both home care and, and long-term care. Um, they, what was written into policies was in that training for staff needed to include about gays and lesbians, um, et cetera. Some other policy kinds of things that changed. Um, I have to say that that was quite successful with the previous government. Um, let's just say that not much has occurred since the government has changed with the current government. Um, but some of those policies are still in place because they were written in and they haven't been changed um, on that. So, that was another avenue that we took um, is looking at um, how we could make systemic changes over the longer term. Uh, and and um, we did a lot of that work. I, many of us as, as a group, two or three of us to meeting with, with different uh, officials uh, and different government departments. That, next, please. Yes. So <clears throat> that brings us to a bit more where we are currently. Um, um, and, and really, I think um, probably starting in 2017-18, um, we had done a number of things, but the issue around re residents and a place to live 
um, really kept coming back that that somebody needed to look at that. So um, we again received some money from the city um, and did an, another uh, a second survey that was looking specifically at residents um, and and what that would mean. We did have uh, nearly 200 responses. I think we had 199. We had 200 responses, uh, kind of thing in that from, from people. Um, uh, some of you who are here were part of answering that uh, as well. Um, and we were, uh, our surveys were always careful, but there are, there, there's no um, uh, you know, directory of gays and lesbians in the city. So it was us getting friends and other friends and other people we knew to fill in the information and bring it back to us. Um, it had a lot of information that we have found to be particularly informative um, that, that we, we were able then to do some work on. Uh, so some of what we heard, um, it, it, some of it was similar to the first, but, but we had quite a few people responded who were couples and, and they wanted to be clear that as couples that they would be still affectionate They'd still be loving with each other and that that would be part of who they were in a residence and that need to be understood. Um, people also talked about or wrote about that they wanted um, uh, social activities um, that were appealing to older gays and lesbians, um, uh, books, films, um, activities, um, maybe, you know, the, the, the members of the court performing, uh, taking part in, in public events that were aimed at gays and lesbians, specifically like, like some of the pride events we've had in, in past years, um, that, that that would be important for them. Um, they, uh, people were very, also very clear that there would be strong, specific policies against discrimination that if you were discriminated against or bullied, there was a, no place for that. And there was a, a remedy for, for dealing with people who in fact were discriminated. That, that, that policy had to be very clear and all staff needed to be trained that, that would work at a residence like this. Um, it needed to be part of the, the documents that were provided to prospective people who wish to move there, that they were clear that, that, that we had a policy on this and, and, and it was not, um, that could not, uh, that would not be allowed. And, and that, that, that um, w w was um, spelled out specifically. So with what we heard that read and going through that and talking about it among our group, um, uh, we moved to then to, um, again, we got some money from the city um, to develop a prospectus, a document, um, which you can also look at, that, that um, describes who we are, what are the challenges, what is it we wish to achieve with the residents, how much would it cost, how many people would be there, what would it cost to build it, to run it, um, uh, and, and where it would be located, um, the preference for location, um, that it would be uh, uh, specifically for LGBTQ2S plus plus allies, kind of thing in that. And probably as important, about 50 people indicated that over a four to six or seven year period, they would seriously consider moving into a residence like that. Um, which really set us moving because there was something for us to base the decision to move it, try to move ahead with, with um, uh, land and, and the residents. Um, I would, you know, truthfully, um, it's been a huge task and a, a big challenge um, that we did, um, uh, develop partnerships, or in that, and we're still in that process of completing that. One of them with Sage Edmonton, which has been our home ever since we started. Who would be interested in programming? The other group, though, is, is the Garner United Asso uh, Assisted Living Place. They're a nonprofit 
organization, or they're actually a company. Um, they have a charitable status and they run Ashburn Senior Center, Senior Living Center, uh, it, which is, um, Ash, Ashburn is right close to the University Hospital where they have a hundred units. They're the only, I think in the country, the only senior residence that is affirming. And they've been that all the way through in their literature, the training, et cetera, and that. And they, they are, um, I would agree to be part of uh, assisting with this moving forward, that they would um, own the land if we've got land, that they, they would likely own the building as well um, if we were able to, to do a, a building, to build a building. Um, none, none of this has been, uh, I, T talking and working at this has been fine. And, and I think our prospectus and what we've done is really um, excellent. Uh, but actually getting land in building is still um, in the distance. Um, let me put it that way. Um, we have recently uh, instituted a, a smaller group within our group to look at raising money that we might be able to partly purchase uh, some land. Um, uh, there's the opportunity, I think, to look at whether there are developers in Garno in the downtown area or around uh, McEwen um, that are thinking about building that we might be a portion of something that they would build or kind of an annex or whatever that they would um, uh, take on something like that. Um, the Any land in Oliver all available land in Oliver is the most expensive in the city these days, um, which isn't helpful here. The downtown is not much better. It's a little cheaper around uh, McEwen, um, but, but in, in Oliver, much of the land is already tied up by developers as well. So it, um, there are a lot of issues to try to get land. Um, and that, that certainly is a, a big piece. We're, we, we've been working with uh, CMHC, um, who funds uh, provides mortgages um, for for many groups and uh, and people, um, and they've been very helpful. We fit the guidelines as a marginalized group. Um, we're one of the listed as a marginalized group, and also seniors is one of their priorities. So we fit with some of that. That would be a very significant partner in terms of, of actual money for uh, as a mortgage to build the, the uh, building. Um, so so that's that's kind of currently where we where we're at. And so um, if we go to the next slide, that takes us back to what I said earlier on in that. I think from my perspective, what most we are interested in this journey today is having you think a little bit about what has shaped who you are as you move through this journey and start to realize you're, you're probably moving towards the final part of the journey. What do you think about in terms of death and dying and what that means and, and how you expect and what you expect in that process? And also to recognize that when you've reached the age that you have now as an older person, you have built and developed a huge reservoir of capability for handling the kind of obstacles and the kinds of things that, that we have faced through our, as we've grown older. And you bring that as the strength and the gifts to this kind of project. And more importantly, you bring that to the next generation. The next generation sees here are people who are older, they've managed, they're doing well, they're in a place that, that works well. I can be like that too, even though I'm 30 now when I become 75. And I don't think you can ever underestimate how valuable that is for other people like ourselves in our community as they grow older to see that face and how we're able to move forward. So with the next slide, I wanna thank you for listening to the presentation. Um, looking forward to questions and answers or um, comments that you, that you might have. Um, and in doing that, uh, we'll get rid of the PowerPoint. I'll turn it back and Larry will help, uh, help me with 
any written questions people may have put in in the uh, uh, probably the chat box, um, or if you have questions or comments that you can just flip your hand up or let us know one way or the other, and we'll see what we are maybe able to provide. So um, we will see. Larry, do you have anybody? Uh, I don't have any any uh, questions from the chat box. I do have a question for you. Um, you've had a distinguished career that has had massive influence in Edmonton, not only on the GLBTQ 2S plus community, but also on the larger community. Can you tell me in what you think being gay, being gay, what advantages that gave you in the larger community and what obstacles you encountered? Well, um, it, it's uh, probably always a little easier to talk about some of the obstacles um, kind of thing, because of course, like most all of you here, um, um, you could be discriminated against, and that meant um, in, in terms of employment or housing um, or services. And 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 I I you know I started my career as teaching five year olds and four year olds, you know, where everyone thought that you know somebody like me who was gay you know was there to you know it was a child molester kind of thing and that and the worst possible things around. Um, and 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 the obstacles, uh, you know, that kind of sensibility really drove me to be extremely careful about letting people know that I was gay and lesbian. It, it took some other things to, to uh, for that to happen. We also, of course, in Edmonton went through the bath raids uh, where 50 um, some people were, were they had criminal records because they were in a bathhouse that was raided by the police kind of thing and that. Um, we had, I lived through one of my, one of the things that, that, that still angers me hugely um, um, I was on council with um, Mayor Smith for, for nine years, um, and he wouldn't proclaim uh, gay pride. Um, it was taken to the Human Rights Commission, um, who indicated that, that he needed to do that. Um, and in, instead of just kind of doing that, he wrote this um, media thing about how he didn't agree and it was that bad. He didn't think this was appropriate to do for the folks and that, but he would because they had to, he knew me. I worked with him all those years. He knew lots of other gays and lesbians. I can't tell you how hurt I was that he wrote and said that about folks like us. It, I, I will never forgive him for that. It was horrible. However, there are other things um, that, that were um, positive as well. Um, um, I, I have always felt uh, um, being recharged as I spent time with people in the gay and lesbian community. It's always been a place where I and go back and um, and and just feel that kind of energy and that kind of goodwill and uh, the kind of acceptance and um, all of that that that's there. And I think that's part of of what we're we're hoping if we build a residence that has that kind of feel to it. Um, I, my days in city council, um, you know, I, I won some, I lost some, but certainly that was encouraging, and certainly. Um, most members of city council, almost all, and, and mayors with the exception of, uh, although I got along with 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 um, uh, Smith on a day to day basis, um, and but a lot of the city administration um, were were very supportive and and um, were very helpful to me um, as a politician, kind of thing too, which which was that I must say that that the general public that I dealt with the area that you know I I won five elections, kind of thing that and you know. There was always other choices, and maybe people should have made other choices. But I got back in, kind of thing. That so so I bring some of that kind of thing that too. So, and and people knew that I was gay. I mean, you know, after a while, not, not everybody. I mean, you know, but most people would have known. So thanks for that. <laughs> there was a question I think or two in the box. There are there are questions in the box. Yeah. The uh, the first uh, is. Uh, Jan asks whether there are other cities in Canada that have already accomplished 
what uh, uh, Abbott and Pride Seniors Group is trying to do. Not not directly. Um, uh, Ottawa has has a system that they've put in place, and their their new uh, their new group, which is not that new anymore, um, uh, it, where where they they've rented uh, some units and places. Um, uh, 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 Toronto does a little of that, but it's a city. The, Toronto doesn't have an organization quite like ours either, and that I'm a little surprised at as well. Um, and, and there have been rumors of a group trying to form in Vancouver. I don't think that's happened. And I don't think it's really happened in Calgary. There, Calgary's talked about it numerous times, but I don't think they actually have a group that's functioning. Um, and that. So I, so I think we're, we're probably further ahead than any, of the, any other city that I'm aware of, or our group. I, I, I mean, I, I don't think anybody else in our group has found any other place either. I'm not aware of, of any. Um, uh, Roy asks uh, whether there be there would be an age requirement uh, to move in. Well, that's a good question. Um, I, I I think um, uh, it's it, it, and it, it, it that that it would likely likely be something about 60, 65 or some other condition that would require it. But but it would also need to take into account that 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 you may have a partner that is younger, and so. Um, you know th that making that all possible. I mean, we some of us some of us dream of that younger partner, but some actually have the younger partner kind of thing. In that, um, is, so we want to make sure that that we were you know accommodating that for both the uh, men and women. Of course, I, I didn't mention and I should have that the first survey we did um, that of the 130 was almost 50 percent women, 50 percent men that responded to that. We also had a, a, a very small representation from trans and from indigenous uh, that but they were very small. But we had a significant number of women who I assume were lesbians. But I know that these days one needs to be careful. One should not make assumptions. Exactly. Uh, uh, but after that editorializing, Roy has a couple. I believe the question about rental versus oh, yeah. uh, uh, purchase has been answered, and it is a rental property it would be rental. that we are con considering. Yeah. Uh, Roy also asks about transportation uh, for outings and so on. Is that part of what is being thought about? For this idea, um, I, oh, oh, I think only a, a little bit. It, it, certainly, the the response from people is they wanted to be where there was good transportation, either either you know LRT, uh, taxes, buses, whatever, and that. Um, um, and 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 I think that that would um, you know that, that clearly is is in our thinking and where we're looking for places uh, as well. Um, if if we were um, be, uh, work, one of the benefits of working with a place like, like um, Ashburn is they they do some of that. They already work in that area, and and that that would help to us to figure out how to do that best as well in in a new facility as well. They you know they bring that kind of capability kind of thing and that understanding. Um, if we also have. Um, yeah, some some parking spaces. Although what we have learned is that as people get older, there are fewer and fewer people that drive. I just talked to somebody who many of you would know, um, who just turned a significant age and said that they stopped driving. Period, and that's it. Kind of thing in that. So um, many of us will not have a vehicle eventually. <laughs> Anything? That's any true. other? Uh, there are two two questions from Sydney. Um, they, in a sense, uh, fit together. Firstly, she's asking very specifically about women's rights fitting into the uh, into the strategy that we you've discussed, and then more broadly, her question is: What do you experience as the shared values of the committee? Ah. Uh, um. Uh, so, um, uh, it, 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 I would say that uh, one of our benefit, one of the things that's, that I think it has been helpful is that right from the beginning, it was Sherry McKibben and I, uh, and many of you will know Sherry, Sherry, and then Sherry died, I guess, nearly 10 years ago now, um, suddenly, <clears throat> but um, 
um, uh, we, we've um, been fortunate to have what I would call, um, you know, very in, interested women who have taken part in, in, in uh, all of these discussions and, and the work that we're doing. <laughs> and and um, um, I, I think that, that, that uh, it will continue to be. Um, in addition, um, in our, our work on, in some partnerships, um, Ashburn, the, the key person is, is the executive director who's a woman and in Sage, the key person is a woman as well. Um, I, I think all of that will help to ensure that 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 um, um, that influences uh, or in, that we we what moves forward um, embraces the diversity of of uh, both men and, and women, but also other diversities in what we're doing. <laughs> and and um, um, as with all organizations, there's a lot of variety of opinions and, and, and backgrounds that people come from. Um, um, I, I, I would say that that in Edmonton Pride Senior Group, we've been fortunate that, that we have worked pretty well as a group. Um, and, and when people think that we need to be doing something more, or people bring it forward and I think been fairly responsive to, to go at it. At some times we've had to say, well, maybe not that one yet, or maybe hold off a bit uh, on that. Um, I also, I think that, that um, the, the group, um, uh, uh, our great volunteers, because we do a lot, you know, when I do, pre when we talk about presentations, many of us have done presentations, all as volunteers, and all of the stuff that we've done has been by as volunteers, all the grants we've made, we all volunteers, and and almost everyone in, in the, in um, at Pride Center have taken a role at different times doing these things, and that too, so, so even though there's a, a variety of opinion and, and direction, and that I think that makes us a richer organization, we also, people are also very committed and do a lot of work I mean, actual day-to-day -day stuff that need to get done kind of thing in that too, because we have no staff. Um, we've never had any staff. We've done all the work through contracts, the survey that we did, we hired someone to put that survey together and contract that. Um, uh, and we've contracted um, somebody else to help do the PowerPoint that we eventually ended up with. Um, so. So we we um, yeah we have no staff. So we have to do everything, and I think that typifies um, uh, our our group and who have been willing to do that and to bring their experiences to the group. I think that's the other part that's valuable, kind of thing. Just as I bring some of my experiences, everybody brings some of their own, and that um, and sometimes we Michael, can you see there are some some questions coming from attendees. I, uh, can you see uh, those people or do you want me to direct you to them? In the chat box? No. Or uh, you no they're not in the chat box from the others. I have John DeLima, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your surname. Did you, you, did you have a question or comment? John? Oh, John, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation, Michael. I just moved here from the West Coast, so this is brand new to me out on in Vancouver. They may have talked about this kind of project, but they're nowhere near. But my question to you is, you had mentioned earlier that um, you're looking for land and um, sponsors and, and uh, commitments. What kind of time frame are you looking at well, to make this a, a yeah. vision? Well, um, uh, uh, I think before, if we were fortunate in the land building, uh, we're still, I think, three to five years away. Yeah, you know, it takes a while to get out of the plan, build, open, and that. And I would say at this point, probably five years because we don't have land yet, um, kind of thing in that, because everything else depends on having land. You, know, you can't build something in the air kind of thing or, or some something that will uh, have a, a location that. So that, that's what I think um, my best guess is at this point. And some days I'm a little discouraged that it'll be a little longer, but and I won't be around for it. That, but be that as it may. Thank you. And thanks for, the, th thanks for the question. And, and I'm glad to, uh, not glad, I, I'm, in, I'm glad you knew something of, or that 
yeah, uh, in Vancouver. Because I know that we, we'd heard rumors of something, but never been able to identify anything there too. So thanks for that. Yeah, Larry? A, uh, a question about whether there would be medical staff uh, or a facility on site. I think the answer to that is not necessarily. There certainly would be nursing personnel of some sort which is a yeah. standard part of senior uh, um, area. I would like to return to the question about women's rights that Sydney initially asked, because I'm aware that we have uh, female members uh, of, our, uh, of our committee, and I'm wondering whether anyone there wish, any of the, the women wish or who are here wish to make um, any further comments on, uh, on the response that Michael, ga Michael gave. If not, I'll. Um... Yeah, to Sydney. Sydney, do you want to add anything? I do think that uh, there are issues for uh, gay women uh, that are slightly different than issues for gay men, and and I think sometimes uh, as a committee we discuss this, but I do have a feeling if we embedded something in our ah. overarching values. Okay. that that would be a, a positive step. Um, I also think the issue of individual rights, when we think about couples and their rights as we all get older, is an issue that, uh, you know, in the future that we will probably embed in a, a value statement or a mission statement. Yeah. So uh, I was asking you, your experience is so vast, Michael, that um, uh, I think that part of what as a committee, we need to do is sort of entrench all those things that we believe and have learned. And I think the website is wonderful. And uh, probably it's time to maybe look at it and make sure that some of these things are there. Yeah. Even if the housing isn't there before we are all gone. <laughs> I like the idea that the values might be there before we're all gone. <laughs> Thanks, a great suggestion. And I think we can certainly do that um, with, we get at it a bit. Um, Thea, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, thanks, Michael. Um, and thank you for uh, all of you for participating in this. Uh, this is a great relaunch and uh, Larry and Jan and uh, Dawn and Kim, I think you've done a great job. This is a, a wonderful group of people to see. And uh, Sydney, you obviously, Notice this as well. We're a little short on the female contingent, but uh, I think with Jan and Joan and Sid and me and Dawn, maybe we can pull some other women uh, to this forum going forward. Um, I think that Michael's kind of nailed it, that we're at a crossroads. Um, we need an address, whether it's a bunch of dirt in an empty lot or an old building that is um, viable for repurposing. And um, until we get that address, I think that our project is just going to be a dream. As soon as we get the address, I think we really can capture in Corral just a ton of energy and money. So, you know, we're, we've made some strides. I really, I think I share with you, Michael, that some days attainment of this actual physical residence seems like a distant goal to pursue. And some days it actually feels tangible that, that we're really, we've got some momentum going, I think. So, um, you know, we're building a network and I think the folk on this screen are a part of the 2021 additions to that network. So I would like to say to all of you that are here, um, we have postcards, uh, that kind of capture a little bit of who we are at EPSG, talks a little bit about our housing initiative, but uh, we need ambassadors. And when the time comes, and I'm expecting that that will happen sometime this year, we will have some concrete programs, funding activities and events um, that, that we will then say to you, we need help. And so we're gonna reach out we don't know where you live, but we're going to find you somehow <laughs> in the network. And uh, many hands make light work. So uh, thanks for making this time today. And Michael, 
only the good die young. So you're going to be around for a long time. So and we'll build this building before you, you need it. Thank you. Well, I yes, thank thank you for that. I only claim to be 18, but whatever. Um, so, Larry, any any further? Uh, I think um, I left um, one one question of Jan's yes. for the as the last. Uh, question and uh, once I'm in the chat room, I can get it for you. And Jan asks, if this were a perfect world, what is the one thing that we need to move this project forward? One thing. Well, that's a good, I, I think it, it could be a couple answers. I would say land. If we had land that, that, that I think we could make almost everything else work. Yeah, because I, I, as as Thea said, it's an you know it's an address. It sounds real. Um, we know through other sources like CMHC and and that which goes through banks and all blah blah blah. Those things can be possible as well as I also believe that um, other organizations and governments and individuals are, become willing to contribute or put money into something like that because it's like it's real and it's going to happen. So, so uh, I, I do think that um, uh, land is, is probably our, our most challenging at this point in time kind of thing in that. Um, uh, and, and I you know, have hope for that. And, and it does, uh, um, I, as Thea was mentioning, there need to be more work at time. And, and um, you know, we did start this in 2013, which is what, eight, nine years ago now. Lo and behold, I, I know both uh, Sherry and I never expected to be around and and doing this kind of thing this long. And Sherry, unfortunately, died. Um, I'm still here, um, kind of thing in that too. So um, it is not a short process. It takes a fair bit of time and work, kind of thing. And we've learned that, and that, and, and good work. And, and you know and that we've we've uh, we've we've managed not too badly. So, any, are there any other questions anybody has? Or any other comments anyone wishes to make? Uh, Blair? Yeah, just to add further to what Michael said, when we looked at um, uh, gay and lesbian housing, uh, there's way more uh, examples in the United States, in New York City, uh, um, in South Carolina, San Francisco, Amsterdam, we looked at. When they got land, that was the catalyst that moved it along. And uh, I even talked personally to some people who said, once we had the land, then people not only did the funding start appearing, but people signed up for it and knew it was real. So I agree with, with Michael as a land is a catalyst. Also it's, it's capital. So when you go to yeah. CMHC for funding, there's a lot of grant programs, a federal program. When you have land that serves as capital for uh, getting loans, of course, because we need loans, and also for grants. So, yeah, yeah. Good. Thanks for that. Any any other um, questions or comments anybody has they wish to make? And I, Larry, is that your hand up? Uh, it is my hand up. We're I'm just uh, we're at. Uh, about six minutes uh, to the hour, let's do, since there's obviously a great deal of interest in the housing, I did want to let everyone know that Blair McKinnon, um, who is one of our leading people on the, uh, this particular aspect of the, of, the, of the project is going to give the aging with pride in two weeks time. So think about this, think about some questions that you have for Blair and he will give you um, additional details to the, the summary that Michael has done. And so I, I urge you to come to that. Um, are there any other uh, questions or any further comments you need to make, uh, Michael? Uh, uh, besides thanking folks, I, I do want to emphasize that we do have a website, um, EP, Edmonton Pride, EPSG something. .ca. Ron, help me. Oh, there EPS. you put it on. Yeah, EPSG.ca. Uh, so you got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm, uh, that's one of the other. I have to thank Ron Byers at the moment, whom I yes. see as a participant here. Um, we're at five minutes too, and I think we're we're at the point where 
I probably uh, should uh, make some closing closing remarks. So I will give anyone a chance to say your piece. If not, uh, I, I'm really going to thank Michael for a, a stimulating talk and a, a splendid overview of, uh, of what we have done. I'd also like to say this is our first effort and I am most grateful to uh, Kim Marine for her technical assistance for helping us with the um, uh, uh, closed circuit uh, and uh, with American Sign Language. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kim. And I'd also like to thank ja, uh, Jan Schmidt, uh, uh, Don Carter, and Rachel Tassone from SAGE who are my colleagues on the, um, the um, uh, Aging with Pride Steering Committee. And thank you all. I hope that we will see you again next week when Don Carter, a, a member of this group, and also the executive director of um, Pride Center of Edmonton will be our speaker. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a further favor uh, we're, we'll send out by email a short evaluation questionnaire. Please, please fill it out and return it uh, to us. Uh, uh, your opinions really are crucial for planning uh, future programs. May I ask as well that everyone register uh, uh, for uh, pre-register for future Aging with uh, Pride events. You can contact us at agingwithpride at pridecenteredmonton.ca. Um, I know there were some technical glitches be at the beginning this, um, this morning, but I think we really did pretty well once we got going, considering that, uh, that this is our first effort and uh, that uh, we had quite a sort of raft of, uh, uh, of registrants at the last minute and some people who, who simply called in. So again, uh, please, please pre-register pre uh, uh, for that. And I'm now going to return you to our host, whether that is, I guess is Dawn or Kim. Uh, and again, thank you all very much. And I hope to see you next Thursday the uh, same time for Don Carter's talk. Thank you yeah. so much, Larry. And thank you everyone for coming. Uh, this is a wonderful turnout. Uh, when we first started talking about this, we sat in a group at Sage and we're like, maybe two people will show up. <laughs> we didn't expect all of you to come. Um, and this is a wonderful kickoff for us. And this was really great for me uh, because um, I, you know, I'm in my early 50s and housing is something that I've been thinking about, you know, um, as a member of the queer community, where am I going to live? Who's going to take care of me? Um, so this is definitely a pertinent concern uh, for me as well. And I can't wait um, to be a, a future beneficiary of the very hard work that EPSG is, is putting into this housing project. It's needed, it's critical, and the Pride Center of Edmonton um, supports it. So as Larry said, we will be sending out a survey by email, and uh, we will also be sending out information on how, what sessions are coming up and how to register for them. Uh, for now, um, you can email Kim at Aging with Pride at pridecenteredmonton.ca. And you can also call SAGE as well to register. So on that note, it's at 11.59. So thank you very much for coming and have a wonderful day. And hopefully I'll see you next week when I talk about the Pride Center. So take care for now, everyone. <laughs>